All right, this is the circuit board that's cracked. Now what I'm going to be doing is, all I'm really going to do is solder a jumper from one side of the board to the other. Because when you got a crack like this in uh, the circuit board, it stops all the current from flowing. Because it, uh, it breaks these copper leads. Now first what I'm going to have to do is gonna have to sand down everywhere I'm going to solder and over here is going to be a little challenging but uh, we'll see what we can do hopefully it won't be so hard after all but we can get it done it's no problem alright the soldering irons warming up and after that gets done we shall be able to solder these leads <laughs> I don't have any sandpaper, so I'm just going to scratch this enamel off with a knife here. You can do the same thing. You'll see that there's like an enamel coating. That's the stuff that's over top of the copper leads. And after you get that off, you'll see it gets a little lighter. That's where you can put your solder at. I'm going to do that on both sides. Alright, so now we have our board scraped here, 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 here. As you can see, that way the solder will stick to the copper. To the copper plating on the board we can all you gotta do is create a jumper from one side of the board to the other because right where the crack is there's no current gonna flow and that's what's stopping the radio from working after we fix this board here I'm not saying it's gonna work yet but it's there's a possibility over here I think is for the speaker wires I'm gonna have to fix that too because uh, only one side works. I think only the left channel works. The right channel doesn't work. And I think that this could uh, be the cause of that. Crap, what I do with the solder? Here it is. What you want to do is you just want to put a drop of solder right where you scratched off the enamel. That way it'll be easier to solder your wires. Whoa. I don't think I scratched it off enough because it didn't stick. That's another thing. If it doesn't stick, you know you didn't scratch it off enough. Alright, here you go. We've got our solder on this lead. I didn't get one on the center lead here. I'm going to scratch it again up there because for right here, it kept sticking to this one over here. So I figured I would just scratch it up here and solder another piece up there. But uh, now I'm going to have to put drops of solder down here. And then, right here, I don't know if I'm going to use wires for these jumpers or if I'm just going to use like a piece of metal, but as long as you can get a connection from one side of the board to the other, you're good. Just don't solder on the crack, because if the glue cracks, then you're just going to crack your solder and you're going to have to do it all over again. Right here I have a copper coil that I took out of an FM radio. I don't know how well you can see this thing on the camera. But this copper is probably the perfect size. 
and it's very bendable so you can move it around you can break it easy I think this would be perfect for fixing this so I think I'm going to use this copper coil pull it apart and use the copper as a jumper because as you see that would stick nice to the solder on the board and it's not like a really fat wire that would get in the way or it would cross over other wires so if you're able to find copper so something like this this I think would be good just find some kind of thin wire I'd say copper like this is the best but as long as it conducts electricity and doesn't short out any of your other components anything basically will work all right, I've done a few uh, solder joints here. On the end, I soldered this one. Let me get a clearer picture for you. Hang on. Maybe this is a little better. But right here, I soldered this. Soldered this. I decided not to use the wires because the wires are a pain. They're not really working too good, so... I figured I would just solder the two ends of the board together. And I'll put some more glue on the other side before I put the radio back together. But uh, as long as there's a connection between the two sides of the board that's broken, like right here, still got to do that one. And uh, may not look 100%, but as long as the solder's not touching, uh, like as long as the two different joints aren't touching, but. As long as you join the board together and make sure that wherever it's cracked, both sides have a connection like they normally would, you're good. But don't short anything out because then you can blow out your whole radio if you plug it back in and there's a short. So always make sure your connections are right. Like right here, it looks close, but I made sure they're not touching. They're not shorting each other out. So and then um. I would show you me soldering, but it's a pain to hold the camera and show you, so. But I have the solder right here. Can't really see right here. Where the shiny uh, copper is. Right there. And Alright, well, I'll show you what happens after I get done this. Alright, as you can see, it's not the greatest solder job, but I've already double-checked. This rail on the end here there's nothing there so you don't need to solder that one but I double checked all the solder joints all the rails here are connected now I'm going to try and hook the radio up and see if it works hopefully that will work now I gotta put this back inside the casing really I should work on this but I'm not really worried about it these old radios you always got to be careful your dial strings once these strings come off you ain't going to be able to fix them easy they're hard to fix I forgot there's a ground plate.
Now I don't remember where the power wires go, but I know they go somewhere over here. Tape player is not 100%, but at least uh, it's able to get the buttons to work again. Just had to fool around with it for a while, and it seems to work. So I'll try and hook this thing back up now. Hopefully, I can remember where the wires go. All right. These wires, they just plug back into the board. It only takes a couple seconds. You know what, as a matter of fact, before I put this radio together, I'm going to plug it in and make sure it works. So I took the tape player out again. I'm going to plug this thing in and make sure it works before I put it all back together and then have to take the whole thing apart again. So at least in this radio here, you don't have to cut any wires or anything to take the board out. Luckily they just unplug. I like how they made this radio easy to fix. So uh, positive, negative, and ground. And over here is your speaker wires. It's funny, they have it exactly how the headphone jack is. Positive, negative, and ground instead of just having two positives and two negatives. But Alright, DAM and FM radio don't work. No, I must not have done it right. Well, since the tape player buttons now are working, I'm going to put in the tape player and see if that works. AM and FM don't work, but I don't listen to the radio anyway. <laughs> I'm going to see if the uh, tape player will work now.
Well, the motor's running, but it's not supposed to be running. <laughs> I don't know what to think about that one. Besides, pull the wire. <laughs> Clearly, I suck at soldering. I actually made the radio worse than what it was to begin with. But uh, I'm going to see if the amplifier and the tape player works. If it works, then I'm happy. That's all that matters, but I think I screwed it up a little worse than what it was. Alright, the circuit board over there, the amplifier, as far as I know, is alright. But there's something in the switch here. Every time you push this button down, there's a switch that turns the motor on and off. Either that switch is dirty or is broken because the motor just spins continuously and will kill your batteries if you have batteries in it. So I gotta figure out a way to rig it up or just make it work to where the motor doesn't continuously spin. I think that's the switch there. Before I even mess with the switch, there's one thing I noticed. If you turn this, those belts are supposed to move, and those belts are not moving. So that tells me that this is really dirty. So I'm going to pop these belts off of here. I'm going to clean the belts, and I'm going to clean that, and see if it'll spin. Over time, these belts will stretch, but it doesn't mean that you need new belts. You just got to put something on the belt to make it stick to the gear, like uh, just something sticky. Anything sticky will make that work, but there's drywall inside of this tape player. That's why this isn't working. <laughs> there's a lot of drywall, and that powder is stopping the belts from gripping the plastic. And that's what turns your gears. But, uh, gonna try and clean that. The glue from this duct tape is a perfect example. The glue is sticky and makes the belt sticky. So then there it'll, it'll grip the gear. And at the same time, it takes dirt. Hang on, I don't know if you can see that. It takes all the dirt off whatever is on there. All that dirt right there is on this gear, and that stops the belt from gripping. Normally the belts are salvageable, but these ones here, I tried making them sticky and yet it still isn't working. These are stretched too bad. See, I mean, you can... The top one there turns, but the bottom one here doesn't. belts in there are they're, uh, in bad shape. There's probably ways to fix them, but I'm not really worried about it. I wanted to get the radio to work. I might take that apart and work on it again.
Alright, here's our solder joints again. I haven't really figured out which one is the problem. They all seem good to me, but I gotta double check. Because clearly one of these solder joints are bad, or I forgot to solder something. Because there's no cracks over here in this board. This board's all good. And it worked at one time, so I know that none of the chips went bad. The problem lies within this circuit board. And probably somewhere around here, or up here. So that's what I'm narrowing my area down to. Right around here. I see a couple problems right here. When I connected the board back over here, I think I accidentally got solder here and over here. Now that one right there, there's a possibility that those two are supposed to touch, but over here, I don't think these two leads are supposed to be touching. And when I soldered the crack board together, some solder must have went over and stuck to the lead right here. So I'm going to try and heat that up and take off the solder to get a better look. And over here, that seems a little close. Alright, I'm just going to touch this uh, knife around use this as a ground just to see if this circuit is working at all alright we're getting power to the circuit we know that oh there we go so there's our problem there's not enough current getting to this side of the board In studio with Amanda from Metapass Weight Control Centers. Hi, it's thing is, is it, uh, my story of losing over 50 there's no power getting to the, to the tuning selector. This is very simple and straightforward. It's mindless, there's no counting calories. You turn the so tuning far. selector, it's nothing happens. It actually turns out the board was cracked underneath of the uh, the wheel here that the dial strings are connected to. Just solder the uh, piece of solder here, right there, and right there. Because as you can see, this was there's a crack here. There's also another crack right here. I gotta see where that goes. I think it goes all the way up the entire board. So I'm going to have to solder that and maybe, maybe the radio will turn on. Alright, I was able to get the dial strings back on, thank the Lord for that, because they're a pain in the neck, but uh, down here by the tuning selector underneath was cracked, I didn't know it, because it was all covered in dirt, so I uh, soldered them solder joints. Now I need to unplug the soldering iron. And,
All right. Let's see if this thing works. No sound at all. All right, I was able to get the amplifier for the tape player to work. But the thing is, is it this right here is your power switch that turns on your motor and uh, basically tells the circuit board to give the motor and the amplifier power. But what's weird is that the amplifier stays on constantly. And when you push down the play button, that switch turns on. Now what's weird is that if that switch doesn't turn on and you push play, the sound is loud. But if that switch goes on, the sound stays quiet. I don't know what to think about that, so I'm just going to bend the switch up. So that switch... If I bend the switch up, when you push play, it won't turn on like that. Like if you push uh, fast forward or whatever button you push, basically that'll that'll turn on. That switch will go down and tell whatever circuit. I don't even know how it works, but uh, I'm gonna bend that and stop that from turning on. Over here is the receiver. I flipped it over and fixed all the cracks resolder the joints and it still doesn't want to work so I'll save it for another day just happy that the tape player works I'm satisfied <laughs> all right where's the screwdriver don't even know what I did here it is change my mind. I'm not going to bend that switch. I'm just going to take it out because there's a screw right here. There's a screw right there, so I'm just going to unscrew it. And that should be good. That right there is what's keeping our sound from working the way it should. So I'll just let that hang. Now when you push the play button, the head will go down without that switch turning on. Oh, crap, I forgot the plate. <laughs>